Hey, welcome to our lesson on mean, median, mode, and range. Mean, median, mode, and range. Well, the first three of those, mean, median, and mode, are types of averages. They're ways to try to describe a data set or a series of numbers to find out the central tendency. An average is a measure of central tendency. It's a way to try to see or measure the middle values of this data set. It's a type of statistics, and you're going to be dealing with statistics a lot as you get further on in school. Well, let's dive into some examples, and I think you'll understand what we're talking about. Let's say I had this data set. I'm a teacher, and I give a test to a bunch of students, and those are the students' names, and this is the score they got. Well, why would I want to know central tendency? Well, as a teacher, I might want to know because if the average or the central tendency was 100, then the test was probably too easy. Or if the, 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 the average was 50, well, then the test was too hard or I didn't teach the subject very well. So average might be really helpful to me as a teacher. And it's helpful to you as a student, too, because it's going to be the grade that goes on your grade card, the average you got for all the tests and the quizzes and your homework. So average is, is really kind of important. Well, when I look at these numbers, do I see a central tendency? Can I look at that and say, yeah, the central tendency is, is 50? Well, to some extent I can, but it's a little hard. Now, if we graph this data, it might be a little bit easier. For each person's score, Fred got a 75, I've graphed it, and it's right up there at 75. And when I look at this, I can say, yeah, yeah, the middle's right about in there. I've got numbers bigger, and i got numbers smaller, so the middle's right in there. But that's not very precise. Well, there's something we could do to make it a little more precise. If we were to take the same data set and order it from the smallest score, the lowest score, up to the highest score, and put it in order... If we ordered that data set, then it would be a little bit easier to see central tendency because we go to the middle of this data set right in there, and we say, well, that's about the middle. There's a bunch above and a bunch below, and that's right about the middle. So I've got a feel for central tendency. And if I graph this, I could kind of see central tendency. It's right in there. It's somewhere um, that's right about the middle of those. It's somewhere in there where I've got a bunch to the left and a bunch to the right. Well, that gives us an idea of central tendency, but it's not very precise. And math is precise. And math gives us a lot more precise ways of measuring central, t central tendency. And the first is mean. And mean is what you've probably meant by average, as you've talked about average in the past. It's just the sum of all the numbers in the data set divided by the number of numbers in the data set. Let's look at an example. If I had a data set that had 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4, and I wanted the mean, I just add all those up. 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4 totals to 12. And then I divide 12 by 5 because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 entries in my data set. And 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. For our data set over here, if I add up all those numbers, I come up with 850, and there's 11 of those. There's 11 students in the class. So if I divide the 850 by 11, I get 77.3, and that's the mean score on the test for my students. All right, well, let's talk about another way to find central tendency or to measure central tendency, and that's the median. To get a median, you order the data. For a set with an odd number of values, the median is the middle value. It's the one that's right in the middle. For a set with an even number of values, the median is the mean of the two middle values. Well, let's look at some examples and, and see if we can understand what that's all about. Let's say our data set was 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. Well, the median is the one that's right in the middle. That's got the same number of data points on either side of it. And there are one, two data points to the left of that two, and one, two data points to the right of that two. So that two is right in the middle, and that's the median. 
Well, what if there are an even number of data points? Two, two, three, four. There's four of them there, which is an even number. If there's an even number, there isn't a number right in the middle. So you take the two that are closest to the middle and you average them. You get the mean, and in that case, in this case, the mean of two and three is two and a half. So the median of this data set is two and a half. How about for the data set over here? We'd already ordered them. We put them in order from top to bottom, from greatest to least, and there's 11 of them. So let's go up five. One, two, three, four, five. There's five, there's five data points below that 78, and there's one, two, three, four, five above the 78. So our median is 78. Well, there's a third way to describe central tendency. And that's known as the mode. The mode of a data set is the value or values that occur most often. It's the most frequent response or the most frequent value in the data set. Now a data set can have one mode or it can have two modes or it can have no modes. Let's look at some examples. Let's say our data set was one two, two, three, and four. Well, there's only one one, and there's only one three, and there's only one four, but there's two twos, so that's the most frequent number in our data set, so the mode is two. Let's look at another data set. One, two, three, and four. Well, none of those repeat themselves. There's only one of each of those. So there is none that's more frequent than the others, and there is no mode. How about for our data over here? What's the most frequent number? Well, if we look at the data, we'll see there's two 78s, but there's only one of each of the other numbers. So there's only one of each of the values except for 78, and there's two of those, so our mode is 78. Okay, we've calculated the mean, the median, the mode, and the range for this data set. And they're all telling us a similar thing. The mean is uh, 77.3, the mode and the median are 78. So we know that the central tendency is someplace right in there. And all those measures of average or central tendency gave us a number that, that's helpful. We know now about where the central tendency is. But they don't all always work. Let's say we had this data set where Julian got a 2, Marcus got a 2, Michelle got a 3, and Jose, the genius that he is, got a 100. And if we graph this, it's a really kind of a weird graph because it's hard to say, well, what is the central tendency? I mean, where is it? You get this one great big number and a bunch of small numbers. Well, we call this one great big number an outlier. It's something that's way, way removed from all the others. It's out of line with all the other answers. And you may want to take it out of there. It could be that Jose's a college student and all the others were middle schoolers. And maybe he doesn't belong in this average. If we calculate the mean, the median, and the mode for this set of data, the mean ends up being 26.8, but the median and the mode end up being 2 and 2.5. And and which is really a better measure of the, of the central tendency? Well, I don't think that that's the center of this data. I think that the median and the mode are probably better indicators of the central tendency. So the point is that you need all three of those numbers, mean, median, and mode. And at times, some of them may not make any sense. Well, we've got one more statistical concept to discuss today and that's range. And range is not average. Range tells us the disbursement of, of the data points, tells us uh, the, 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 the amount of disparity there is in the data points. The definition of the range of a data set is the difference between the greatest value and the least value. The range describes how spread out the data is. Well, for our data set, the greatest value was 97 and the least value was 53. So if I take 97 and I subtract 53 from it, my range is that difference, or 44. Well, let's try one. Let's find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range for this data set. 
four two eight six. Well, what's the first thing we want to do? The first thing we want to do is put those in order from least to greatest or from greatest to least. One way or the other. It doesn't matter a whole lot. So, I change the order from 4286 to 2468. So, it's, it's easier to look at and it's easier to understand. Now, let's calculate the mean. The mean is the total of those data points, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, and that totals up to 20. And then we divide that 20 by the number of values in the data set. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. So I divide 20 by 4, and I get 5. The median is the value that's in the middle. It's the middlemost value, where I've got the same number of data values uh, that are smaller and the same number of data values that are larger. And you remember that if it's an even number of data points, there won't be a value in there that's exactly in the middle. And that's the case here. I've got a 2 and an 8 that surround 4 and 6. So what I do is I take the mean of 4 and 6, 4 plus 6 divided by 2, and that ends up being 5. How about the mode? The mode is the most frequent data point. Well, in our data series, None of these numbers repeat themselves, so they all have the same frequency, and there is no mode. And then how about the range? Well, the range is easy. You just take the biggest value and subtract the smallest value, and the answer, 6, shows you how much distance there is between the biggest value and the smallest value, and that's the range. Hit your pause key, try this problem, and when you get done, hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, find the mean, median, mode, and range. Well, the first thing we want to do is to order this data series from least to biggest. So I've changed it to 8, 12, 18, and 20. 8 the smallest number, 20 is the biggest. Now, let's figure out the mean. To figure out the mean, I total up those values, and when I do that, I get 58. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4 of those, so I divide 58 by 4, and I get 14.5. How about the median? Well, once again, there's not it's an even number of, of points in our data set, so there's not a number right in the middle. I've got to take the two that are in the middle and get an average of them, or a mean of them. So it's 12 plus 18 divided by 2, which is 15. How about the mode? Well, there's one of that, one of that, one of that, and one of that. So there are, they all have the same frequency, and there is no mode. There is no one with more values than the others. And what's the range? It's the biggest number minus the smallest number so our range is 12. Okay, we've got a chart this time showing us the height of various people. And we want to know what the mean height is. Remember, mean is the total of all the individual heights divided by the number of data points or data values in the series. So. We can look at this chart and see that Sam is 48 inches high. So I take that 48 and I put it down there. And then I add Shirley's height. And Shirley is 51 inches, so I add that. And Susie is 46 inches, so I add that. And Stan is 52 inches. So I add up all those and I come up with 197. And then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 data points in the series, so I divide the 197 by 4, and the mean is 49.25 inches. That was a great big lesson. We covered a lot of material, and you may want to go back and look at this lesson again. You definitely want to go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on mean, median, mode, and range. You really need to work with this stuff to get an understanding of it. And after you've done the worksheet, go back to Master Math and try the online quiz.
Come on back again soon.